Hi, this is M. And in this video, we're going to go into our beginning of color enhancement. I'm going to create a playlist and we're going to do a deep dive into the subject. And if someone is looking for a quick answer on color enhancement, in other words, give it to me in five minutes, um, this probably won't be that. I've been pressing flowers for almost 50 years and I've been questing for color enhancement of flowers for probably 35 of those 50 years and so it's real hard for me to put in five minutes something that uh, I've spent decades messing around with. So this is for people that are really wanting to learn about the subject, are wanting to hear my thoughts about it. I'm certainly not the only one who's ever color enhanced flowers so I can only give you my vantage point and the things that I've learned and so uh, if you've color enhanced flowers and have things to share, I'd love to hear about it. And this particular video, I'm going to kind of start at the beginning and we're just going to work our way forward in that uh, why I started pressing flowers, why I decided that I needed to start thinking about color enhancing flowers. Then I have things that I've had in my archive and stash for years and years that I'm going to show you, uh, things that, that went wrong, things that I didn't like, things that I do like, uh, all leading into the second video which will then go into some formulas to use as a medium for different types of uh, colorants. For example, fabric paints or red dye, uh, coloring uh, types of pens. So we're not going to really take a deep dive look at the paint mediums today because those are things that we're going to go into in the future videos. Today I'm talking about why might you color enhance. I'm going to do some show and tell of other things. You'll hear a little bit about my background if that's of interest to you. And, uh, I'll, and I'll show and tell some things that have been color enhanced, that haven't been color enhanced for you to see some visuals. And then we'll just work from there. So if this sounds like something you're interested in, then we will get started. If I'm talking about something you're not interested in, then scrub along the timeline because I will be very detailed and sharing my thoughts. And I have a lot to say about it. So this segment that we're going to do right now, I'm going to talk about where I started in pressing flowers. So if you're not interested in a little bit of my background, then fast forward uh, the video. And I'm going to leave these here for some visuals while I talk uh, because I don't like to show my face. I started pressing flowers as a teenager and it was because I, my mother used to get subscriptions to Women's Day magazine and you know those kinds of things and I'd, I'd look through her magazines and uh, there was a, an article on pressing flowers and I thought oh that sounds kind of fun and and so I, uh, that's what I started with, with uh, flowers from my my parents' backyard. Then when I got old enough to drive, uh, when I turned 18, I used to uh, go over into the hills, into the wildflowers, and pick those. And at that point in my life, as a teenager, I was just doing things. Um, I would go to the Goodwill and I would get frames. And all, the only thing that I did was pictures, 8x10s, 11x14s, etc and whatever cheap frame I could get. And I used primarily at that time fabric background because my mother was a sewer and so there was always miscellaneous material around. Or again, I, if I went to Goodwill and found some material that I could use for background. I used to like to ha use satiny type materials, um, things like that. And what I did with those is I gave them away. Gave them to my mom for Christmas, gave them to my grandmother, gave them to my friends. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, just doing it to have fun and uh, play around and give them away. And I did that for a number of years and I used phone books and newspaper to press between with books on top as weight. So the, the, you know, the standard how you get started on a budget because of course being a, a teenager and then uh, 1920 that type of thing you, you don't really have a whole lot of funds to work with. And so things journeyed along and I just did flowers as I, as I could and time allows. And it was always something I quested to do. And then as I got older and started traveling around, uh, I 
was a vagabond in the sense that I was living in California, left California, and uh, met my ex-husband at the time, and he was w between uh, homes, and he was on his way back up to Alaska, and I was between homes, and so we started traveling together. And the point being that we stayed in the University District of Seattle for uh, a little while because he had friends there. And again, we were traveling to, on our, making our way to Alaska, although we got sidetracked in, in, in Washington. And he used to frank with this coffee shop. And in the coffee shop, they had a, uh, on their walls, they had consignment pieces. In other words, you know how you go somewhere and you see uh, art on the wall and it's got a business card and then you can buy this for X amount of dollars. Well, even though we were vague and bonding around, I never went anywhere without my collection of pressed flower pictures that I had made. I wasn't going to leave them behind when I left California. And so I had a shelf, because uh, we were living in a step van as we were traveling, where I kept my pictures. And so I asked the owner of the restaurant, oh, I have some pressed flower pictures. Could I display a couple of them here? And uh, he said, yes. So I put them on there, put a couple in there, and they sold. And I was like, wow, <laughs> Just, I can't believe it. And then he even gave me the name and number of a gal who wanted to talk to me uh, about commissioning a piece because she had her house had particular color schemes and she wanted uh, she wanted you know a particular a tone in, in her picture. Well, unfortunately for me at the time, you know I had to turn her down in the sense that I was living in a step van and I wasn't really pressing flowers at the time because I was in transit. But it certainly was flattering and it started leading to believe leading me to think, hmm, people are willing to pay me for my press flower art. And I was not color enhancing at the time. That was my first thought about, oh, people are willing to pay me. Maybe I need to start thinking outside of my just giving things away box into maybe actually trying to make money with it. Long story short, we would wait over in, in Washington and did things there for a while that I have nothing to do with flower pressing, so I won't go into that. And we did finally make our way to Alaska. And when, uh, when we got settled in Alaska and I had a place to live and I was finally able to start pressing flowers again and, and making things, I uh, was still on the flowers in the frame with the uh, fabric background and uh, that was still my, my primary uh, way of displaying flowers. And we lived in Homer, that's Homer, Alaska, which is beautiful. I, I don't know if any of you watching this have ever been to Homer, but uh, I, I haven't been there now for probably 30, over 30 years. But anyway, it was gorgeous. And there is, or was, a, uh, an art gallery there. And my ex-husband was a boat skipper. Uh, on what they call fish tenders, and I got my seaman's license, and so I was went on boats with him. I was I was uh, a steward, which is a cook, and also a deckhand, and um, was actually working to get my own license. But that's again another story. The point back to the point being that we were getting ready uh, one summer. I had made flowers over the winter because I had pressed the prior pressed flowers the prior summer. I had made pictures over the winter, so I had about. I don't know, probably 10 or so on hand. And before we left for the salmon season, I went to the, to the uh, took some of the pictures, went to the uh, art gallery and talked to the owner there and said, could I display these here? And uh, because they, again, did commission, consignment, you could display things there and they'd pay you, a, a, uh, or they'd take a percentage of a sale. And so she said, yes. Yeah. So I took about, well, mo by 10 pictures down and I told her that I would be leaving for the, the summer and, you know, do what you want with them, basically. So we were gone all summer, and I came back probably about the end of August, beginning of September, and thought I better go by the art uh, gallery and <laughs> see if any of my pictures sold. And I was thinking, oh, I'd be lucky to have, you know, one or two things sell. So I went in there. Lo and behold, she said, they all sold. Do you have more? And I'm going... <laughs> 
was like, wow, <laughs> I'm shocked. And uh, But no, I don't have more because I've been gone all summer. So that's when it hit me that A, yes, I can make money off of pressed flower art, and B, I need to, I need to up my game. Uh, because pressed flowers are gorgeous, but they fade and some and, and I didn't have you know as much experience back then as I have now in knowing what are the better things to press to hold color longer, what kind of techniques can I use. Uh, so that's when this whole, let's up the game, let's up the quality, let's think about can I color enhance flowers, all, all came into view. I guess you'd say the business side of pressed flower art was born. I got business cards, I um, you know, did the things that I needed to do to be a business. I started, uh, when I left Alaska, because like I say, that was 30 years ago, I've been in this place I am now for 30 years. Uh, so when I came here and, and had flower arts, I'd go to uh, do juried art shows, and I would go to places that took things on consignment and uh, actually worked at it. And then in 1995, when the internet was, was first getting started, and because I was a, I guess you'd call it, well, my ex-employer, uh, because I worked at a real estate company and ended up becoming a, um, a managing real estate broker. Uh, but I also did their computer stuff. And he used to say, oh, you are a computer guru. Well, the point being that one day uh, my current husband um, said, because I used to do Saturday markets too, he said, and I'll never forget this, he was walking up the stairs and we were, I don't know if we were talking about Saturday market or getting ready to do a Saturday market or what, but I was doing internet stuff. I was just getting started that, and, and I'll never forget. And he was walking up the stairs. He goes, why don't you sell your pressed flower stuff online? Well, there was a whole new thing got born, and that was in around 1995. And while I was doing computer stuff and I had some basic computer knowledge, I had knew nothing about running a business online. So that started another quest, you know. How do you put a website online? What do you need to do? How do you program? So I'm my own webmaster. I always have been because I uh, don't didn't have a lot of money at the time and couldn't afford to pay someone to do it for me. So I learned how to do all that stuff. So from 95 to 97, that was two years was spent learning how to put a website up. And then in 97, my, my M's Place website uh, went live. And at that point, I was selling pressed flower packs, similar to what I do on Etsy now. And, uh, and then some of my own stuff. Uh, I ventured into all occasion cards and gift enclosure cards and bookmarks and magnets and, and just all that kind of stuff. I had on, on M's place at the time. And then I was also still doing some shows and some Saturday markets and that kind of thing. In addition to working, I, I, was, I had a career. <laughs> so this was all a hobby. Um, so how does that relate to color enhancement? After the, the period that I talked about where I did the art gallery, that's when I started thinking about and experimenting with color enhancement. And I got even more serious about it about 30 years ago when I moved here to Oregon. The reason being is because if people are willing to pay me for my press flower art, then I wanted to feel comfortable that when they bought something today, that two, three, four, five years down the road, that there would still be something left. In other words, it wouldn't, everything wouldn't just return to, you know, icky brown. And also I felt that I could probably get a little bit more money for my time if the quality was there. So now we're going to take a look at some examples of things. And we're gonna actually start getting into more of the color enhancement, um, good, bad, and ugly. Some of the early things that I did when I color enhanced, because I was trying everything, it was like, I want, I want things to look natural, 
but just more vivid so that when the underlying flower fades, there'll still be a tint. That was my goal. And there are some things that I tried back then, and I didn't have the knowledge of mediums, and, and you know, 30 years ago, there probably wasn't as much on the market to choose from as there is now either. You had writ dye and, and you know, markers and paints, you know, acrylics and things like that, but I, I just wasn't real well versed in a lot of that stuff as much as I am now. And so I was just trying some things I had on hand. I had oil paints, I had watercolors, because I, I painted, and I'm one of those um, jack-of-all-trades, master of none, if it has to do with crafts. So somewhere along my lifetime, I probably dabbled in it. And so I have all, had, you know, all kinds of different things on hand I tried. Well, let me say first, and again, this is all just my opinion, and you and other people might feel differently, and if you do, share your experiences, as I mentioned. Watercolor. Forget watercolor, in my humble opinion. Watercolor is way too wet. It just, it beads up on a lot of plants. Uh, it's too wet. It makes them shrivel. It makes them, ugh. All I can say on watercolor is just don't. Save yourself some time. Uh, learn from my bad experiences with watercolor and just forget it. So watercolor is off the list. Uh, and I'm not even going to spend much more time talking about watercolor except to say it's an epic fail and it's not for dried, uh, dried material such as this. Something else that I had on hand that I played with uh, that I did not like at all, but I I've have this that I've saved for years and years because I keep things just to look back at and go, oh, that was horrible, so I can see the journey and have I improved my techniques. Uh, this was... Uh, acrylic. Well, let me show you what this is. I'll bring this closer to the camera. These are asters, and what is this? Asters, and I think that's azalea. But back then, I used to spray paint the leaves green. All my leaves, for the most part, were with Kansas spray paint. And so if you look real close, you can, these are spray painted. And, and from a distance, you know, when you use different colors of spray paints, it's, it's, um, it actually looked really good. The leaves always look pretty nice. And this, this is this particular uh, picture is probably, well, it's before what I'm using now. So it, this is probably 30 years old, plus or minus, maybe 25, 30 years old. And Anyway, spray paint or the leaves. So if, if, if all you have is some green spray, spray paint, I still use spray paint once in a while nowadays uh, because it really does work pretty good. So that would I would still have spray paint on my list for certain things. This is acrylic, and you can see how, in my opinion, it, it just made everything look too plasticky because at the time that I did these acrylics, I didn't know about things. This was just acrylic thinned with water. I didn't know about things like matte mediums to help take some of the shine off the acrylic and that type of thing. So if all you have is acrylic, if you have some matte medium, maybe try to uh, thin your acrylics down so that you don't get such a plasticky look. Unless plasticky is what you're going for. Again, color enhancement isn't just about trying to make things look natural but more vivid. It's also about uh, doing an artistic statement also. So there is no right and wrong for color enhancement, but just know what your mediums are going to do. But acrylic paint thinned down with nothing but water, just, uh, I don't know, I, everything, I, I've learned a lot since this piece. And, of course, this is acrylic paint, and this is just, to me, it's, it's a little too in-your-face yellow. You know, it's, it's not, if you want something that's more natural looking, this, this is, is too in-your-face. This is some acrylic, and might, I was going to say, it almost looks like it might have some spray paint on there, but I think it's just acrylic. And the forget-me-nots, I don't think I did anything to them. For, uh, forget-me-nots actually keep their color for a pretty long time, for the most part. But here is an example of something that was acrylic and spray paint. 
Now this one, again, this is very old too. This is probably another 25 plus or minus. Actually, it might be older. It might be into the, the 32 or 35 year old time frame when I was really starting to first develop. And the reason why I, I, I say that is because this flower is from Alaska. And I have not had this flower since. I think I, I had a couple left when I came, came to Oregon. But these were flowers that I used in Alaska, and I love this flower. I wish I could. <laughs> I've often thought about putting an ad in an Alaska paper saying, can you pick this for me and send it? Uh, this is, a, again, this is a deciduous azalea. Uh, this is, I think, acrylic spray paint for the background for the leaves and the, and the little fiddle fern. This is pastel. So this, this is when I was uh, experimenting with uh, soft pastel. And actually, it, it wasn't really that bad. I mean, it's a little bit much here because you see how it kind of goes down in there. Uh, but I, what I, and what I did with, what I did with oil, what I did with pastel, if you want to try pastel, is I take a take a knife like a paring knife or something, not C-rated edge, but but uh, non-C-rated edged, and scrape the powder. And what I used was a uh, egg tray uh, that you buy eggs in, and so I had like my twelve little egg trays, and each one had a different pastel color. And as a matter of fact, somewhere I think I still have that in my stash. Um, because I use it for other arts too, uh, so I've I always have had have pastels around for for doing art stuff, and and then I so I'd have the powder pastels in the egg tray, and then I would take a brush and then I, I brushed it on, and then I'd use my finger and and rub it, and then I took the 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 side of the pastel you know where it had a sharper corner, and you can see where I did these little little specks here and a little bit of darker see this darker orange tone. So that was with um, pastels straight, not, not the powdered. So that's where I was playing around with pastels. But again, when you look at this, although granted it's, it certainly looked better, you know, 30-ish plus or minus years ago, uh, it, it's certainly not, if I did the same arrangement today with the same flowers, it would look so much better. It would just, the quality would be so much better. Uh, because the techniques for, for tinting things has, at least in my opinion, improved so much over the years. Now, something else that was an ep something that, uh, well, we'll talk about the epic fill in a minute, but something else that I did was I went through my, uh, let me get something to put this on. I went through a... a um, marker, you know, colored markers, which I still use colored markers. It's just that I use different colored markers than I did back then. And so this, uh, these are California poppies. This, and, and see how they still maintain to their color, because this thing is back from when I was using contact paper. This is contact paper on the top. And I know that it's super, super old because I laminate my bookmarks on both sides nowadays, and there's no contact paper on the back. And so this was um, from when I first moved here. So this is probably, again, about 25 years old. Uh, probably 25 to, yeah, 25, 28 years old, plus or minus. And the phase I was going through at that time was, was you know, take, uh, whether it was chisel point or, or you know, more of a, the paint uh, brush tip point. And I'd put, the, put it on like this. And then I'd use my finger and I would smooth it out. And this particular marker, whatever it was, uh, now at the time I used Tombow. Uh, my first markers that I had for quite a while were Tombow markers. Tombow markers are water soluble, so they're going to use them for anything with any kind of water moisture. It's, it's not going to work. So this may be Tombow, but I'm not totally sure. I didn't do anything to, to the... Uh, to the buttercup because buttercup holds their 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 color pretty well and I didn't do anything to the Queen Anne uh, these leaves I don't know if they're spray painted or not 
I'm assuming they are because I never, I don't really ever use just plain leaves without doing something to them. But I do know that this is a, a from a marking pen or a, a some sort of flow pen. And those hold the color. That had they held the color really well. So that's how this marker worked out. Now let's contrast that with this piece. Again, this is about 25, 28 years old, um, and there's a couple things going on in here. This hydrangea is uh, pastel. So this was a blue pastel that I did the hydrangea with. I didn't. The centers of these daisies are acrylic. A little bit too too much acrylic. I didn't do anything to the petals, so you can see where the daisy petals turned a, uh, a brownish color. The uh, these are spray painted, the ferns, but these guys here, this bleeding, is marks a lot. I don't know if they still make the marks a lot flow pin had the chisel tip on it. But the brand was Marks a lot, and anybody who's been around for a long time, that was very, very popular back in the day. I mean, when you went to the store, Marks a lot was like it. And uh, if anybody knows if they still make Marks a lot, uh, it'd be interesting to know if they do because uh, because this is what happened. So if they do make Marks a lot and you play around with flow pins, don't even bother with Marks a lot. Uh, this is also an example as we go forward. In talking about color enhancement, when I say um, certain uh, things like certain markers or certain dyes or certain uh, items, mediums, might bleed, when I use the term bleeding, this is like an enhanced example of what I'm talking about. This is major bleeding. And if you're putting something under glass or um, you know, under acetate or something that doesn't have an adhesive to interfere or mix with or react to whatever you're using for color enhancement, you don't really have to worry about what medium you're using because you're not going to have this problem. If you're going to put something like this under glass, then go ahead and use a marks a lot if you want, and that's what you have on hand. But I would just say don't use something like a marks a lot if if you're going to put it under anything that has its own adhesive properties because you don't know how it's going to react to whatever the adhesive formula is and you have no way of knowing what what it what it is so um, that's what I mean when I say that so these are all things that I have had on hand for decades and for the very reason is because I want to I like to see how things age over the years the good thing about the marks a lot was that this reaction happened so quick that I that I never sold anything with this on it. Yeah, um, you know, a lot of these things when I was experimenting, I didn't really sell them uh, because I wasn't happy with the results, which is why I was kept questing for things that I I could be happy with. I did sell things with pastels because I the pastels were acceptable. Um, and I did sell some things with the uh, with some acrylic, although they were better looking than this. This this is one that I wouldn't sell because I wasn't really happy at all with uh, how it looked. So those are some examples of different mediums that I've used, how they've weathered over time. And uh, so that you can see some things that were where we were then and where I'm at now. I don't think any of these are necessarily ugly. It's just not something that I would sell for money. Because, uh, you know, that's, that's where I'm at now. I, I, uh, I sell my pressed flowers primarily for money. I still give them away to family and friends and things like that. But primarily, it's, it's, it's a business. It's part of, part of income generation. In this segment, I want to talk for a minute about... Let me move this sideways. Flowers that you get from your own garden or that I press or that I sell versus um, flowers from primarily China. When I first started selling flowers, as you remember, I told you back in uh, 95, I started the site, and in 97, I went live. 
and I found a vendor, and they're not not there anymore, but uh, I had bought, because I my garden was still young at the time when I first moved here 30 years ago, I, my, my goal was to grow flowers in the garden for pressing, but my garden was young and I didn't have enough for the amount of flowers that I was selling because I was selling flowers on the on the website people were actually buying them and so uh, again my husband says well what about getting some flowers from China and there was a vendor and they had uh, big packs like 500 and so I bought a number of different kinds of flowers um, in bulk thinking oh maybe I'd use them to supplement I never really did much with the china flowers uh, as far as selling them because fortunately my uh, my garden was able to just produce enough to just squeak me by and my my flowers in my opinion of course were uh, better quality but what i want to say about flowers from china which is this half these are from china these are mine and then we'll talk about roses separately so these are mine these are china and most of the flowers from China, then and now, uh, are color enhanced. I mean, these are color enhanced. Now, this one I don't think is color enhanced. It could be. I don't know, but I know these are. These are color enhanced. There's, there's no doubt there. These are color enhanced. I don't think these are color enhanced, but again, I don't know. These two look close to what I would expect the normal color to be. And so I, I, have, I don't know if they color enhanced them. Just like this. These hold their color for a long time, so I don't know if they color enhanced those. But I do know these are color enhanced, and I do know these are color enhanced, and I do know this is color enhanced. Uh, these are not color enhanced. These are natural. So a lot, when I, when I look, because, you know, I, I, I do searches once in a while for pressed flowers to see, you know, who's, who's selling pressed flowers, and... What do they look like and what does the quality look like? Because, you know, I'm nosy like that. <laughs> and it seems like probably 80% of what's out there on the market to buy nowadays are from China. I'm, I've been in the market for so long that I can just tell um, when I look at what's being sold. And even a lot of uh, U.S. vendors are just recycling China flowers, which is what my husband was suggesting 20 years ago, is why don't you just get flowers from China? You don't have to grow them. You don't have to mess with them. All you have to do is take them off one sheet of paper and put them on another sheet of paper and then, you know, save yourself all that time. Which, you know, from what he was saying and where he was coming from, yeah. But, but my problem was they were not up to, well, first of all, the selection is, is limited in the sense that they have a good selection for what they have. But if you want something like an Estrancha, um, you know, or a Bleeding Heart or you know, et cetera, they don't have those things. And so you have to grow them yourself or get them from somebody who does have them. What they have works fine. And a lot of people make their, their products with flowers from China. So, so don't get me wrong, I'm not bashing flowers from China because uh, obviously I have some. I have used them. Uh, I haven't really sold resold a lot of them because I prefer to grow my own flowers and, and sell well, what I consider, I just consider the quality better in the sense of, of uh, well, let me illustrate. Okay, so here's, here is a blue hydrangea from China. And here are blue hydrangeas from my garden. These are not color enhanced. These are just from my garden. Uh, these are fresh from my garden. I mean, in other words, they haven't been sitting around for years and years. But, you know, just, just to show you that you get the difference. And, and it isn't that these are, are bad. It's just I prefer to work with these. And I, I, to me, this color, unless I'm using it for an artistic statement, is just not... It's way too not natural. Now, let me show you one that I did color enhance. Excuse me, I bumped the camera. Now, these hydrangeas I've color enhanced. And hydrangeas 
pressed differently. I mean, this is the later in the season hydrangea, so it's going to have these different tonalities on it. And then this is got a little bit of kind of the greenish. So the different uh, clusters of flowers on the hydrangea have different tonalities in and of themselves too. They're not all you know cookie cutter in in their uh, their coloration. So for example, this guy. This was off the same bush, but picked at different times. This one was probably not quite as as mature as this one, which would be later in the season. But these are color enhanced. These aren't. And so when these eventually start to fade a little bit, they'll still have a little bit of tint on them. Something else about flowers from China that I, I noticed, well, I've noticed, but I especially noticed when I was working on this piece of jewelry. And that is, I don't know how to explain this, but I think that they must, I'm speculating here, and maybe someone else knows more about it. So this is speculation on my part. But my suspicion is that maybe they use a, like a, a silica or some sort of medium, like a pillow that might have some sort of drying agent in it to help the right faster because they, they have, and you can hopefully see it if I put it on some white paper. Let me get a piece of white paper. Now granted, this is a couple of years old because this isn't something that I would ever sell. But what happened is there's these little... It's like little pin pricky type deals, but that's not, I don't know how to explain it. And I don't know if you can see it here, but when you look at it, it's, it's got, I don't know how to explain it. If you, if you look at the texture of this really close, it, it's got, I don't know how to explain it. Here's one from my garden. And it's just smooth. The texture is smooth. Whereas this, if you look close, it's got these little tiny, they're not microscopic because you can see them with your eye, but it's like little pin pricks, but not, not pin pricking all the way through, but it's like stippled, like little, little uh, particles of stippling. And which is why I, it makes me think that, that some of these are dried on a pillow drying agent in it. Let's just say it that way. And when I was using it under glass or under resin, because this is resin, it really pronounced it. I was like, oh my word. So I won't use these under, you know, for me. Now it could have just been the verbena, because this is verbena. You know, maybe, maybe had I done this under resin or this under resin or this under resin, maybe that wouldn't have happened. So maybe it was just the verbena soured me from using these under resin. I don't know. Because I see a lot of people using Chinese flowers under resin and they look fine. So maybe it was just I had a bad experience. So if you're using flowers from China under resin and you're not having this experience, I'd love to hear about it because, you know, again, maybe it was just the particular verbena that I was using that, uh, that did that. So here is a flower from China, and then here's a flower from my yard. Now these are haven't been color enhanced, and these hold their color for a long time. And granted, this is probably um, 20 years old now, or almost 20 years old. So I, I'm sure it, it was a lot more vivid back in the day. Uh, and then here's from China. And here's from my yard. Here's that's more of a, a rust color because they come in different colors. This is more of a rusty orange, and this is more of an orange orange. So that's how that is. And I've already I already showed you the hydrangea. So I just wanted to show you some equivalents of uh, that I had on hand that that also that I still have some ones from China. Now what I have brought from China within the last couple of years is uh, ro roses. These, they're called miniature red roses. 
and now this one I color enhanced, although I haven't done much in the center yet, because this was this before it was color enhanced. And these, I still have some left, and I've had this batch for, well, back when I got this whole batch that I'm talking about almost 20 years ago, I, like I say, I bought a bunch of different ones, and I bought a big quantity of them. Uh, and that's from that batch. And I was running low, and I wanted to buy more, and so I'm willing, I was willing to go ahead and get them from China. It's like, I don't, that's okay, I don't mind getting them from China if I can get some good ones. Because I don't really have any good miniature roses, and they really do a good job of pressing these roses. I, 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 I will definitely uh, give them a shout out on, on their roses. They're expensive, they charge a lot more for them, at least when I was looking around. So these were almost 20 years old. Fast forward to, I think it was 2017 or 2018. I thought, I, want, I need some more. I'm almost out. So I bought some more. And, and, the, and the, I think I got them off of, I don't remember where I got them off of, because the, the place where I got these here is no longer in business. I couldn't find them. And, and that was a pretty good vendor. Uh, so the ones that I bought, the, the verbiage on the listing said, fresh, and I think it was 2018, fresh 2018, and it had all these glorious things to say about it. So I bought about six packs, and they were expensive. This is what I got. I haven't even opened this pack yet. Look at how, I'm, I'm going to do a little complaining now. They're, ho they're horrible. I mean, had I not had expected fresh from 2018, uh, beautiful red, you know, miniature red roses, etc., etc., had I not been expecting at least something like this, and, and, and these were supposed to be fresh, so I was expecting them to be nice and red and fresh. But no. Look at how brown they are. I mean, this whole, whole thing is all browned out. So I did, this pack's not open, but I did open one of the packs, although I don't know where the open pack is right now. And I have a, uh, I have an airbrush. One of the things I, I did back in the day was airbrushing uh, for a neighbor doll company who, they're not up there in Alaska anymore. And he made uh, Eskimo themed and Alaskan themed um, items, curio, display keepsake type items so uh so i have experience with spray painting so i i also bought recent not recently but within the last couple of years an uh, uh, airbrush which maybe one of these days i'll i'll go into airbrushing uh color enhancement but the point that i'm making is that i did try to um I did try to use the regular mediums and paints that I'm using for my flowers nowadays on this, but because my stuff is more of a tint, it would not cover this brown. It just wouldn't. It, it, it just wasn't, wasn't the answer. So I took some airbrush, my airbrush, and some Jacquard airbrush color, which this is also kind of transparent, and, uh, and I spray painted the not these again. I don't know where that where those flowers are right now. But I, I spray painted uh, with the airbrush the flowers, and that worked. That covered up the brown, and still made them look pretty natural. So, like I said, maybe someday we'll take a look at that. But so I have airbrush paints on hand too. While we're on the subject of of um, of using an air gun, an airbrush gun for painting. I haven't done it yet, but I think that for things like Cosmos and uh, Dahlia, these have both been color enhanced. But what happens is because the medium is still pretty wet, even even though it's not pure water, you can see where oh, I don't know if you can see, but you can see where it it's when they they press super flat. But now after they got wet, they aren't. As flat as they were and I'm really not happy with the texture of this. This had a nice flat texture but now it's kind of, of, uh, of, I don't know, it's just not, it's not as good as it was before it was color enhanced as far as the texture is concerned. 
And so I want to, in my quest to always try to improve upon a technique, uh, my, I, I was thinking to myself, well, what could I do to still color enhance these, um, but have a better uh, flatter texture when I'm done, more in uh, alliance with how they look coming out of the, the pressing uh, cycle. And so I got to thinking, well, maybe if I airbrush, because the airbrush, uh, it, it puts, uh, let me get it. The airbrush, it, it lays down such a fine mist. It's, it's just, it's just super fine. And so by the time it, it hits the flower, it's, it's pretty much going to be almost dry. So I thought this, this, and then the roses that, that we talked about um, would be a real good candidate, I think, for something like this. And while, when I talked about airbrushing for, uh, for Neighbor Doll in Alaska, I used the kind of airbrush that had the, had the paint uh, receptacles on the bottom, and the paint would draw up. These, for what I'm doing here, because I'm using so little paint, Couple, couple drops uh, at a time. I wanted one where the paint goes in top and then is gravity fed down. So that's what this one is. And it's, it's pretty cool. I like it. But anyway, the point here is that I thought that this would be a really good candidate for trying to airbrush. Uh, let's see. Oh, and then, and then this is This is also color enhanced. I uh, I think it's a little too intense. I've even taken these because I I will I st <laughs> these I've had these for a really long time too. But I still use these every once in a while. But I have taken uh, my, yellow, for example, and put a layer of yellow tint over them to try to subdue this in-your-face green a little bit because it's just it's a little intense. So that's just all part of uh, playing around and experimenting. Uh, so let's finish our, our Chinese flower segment here. If you have Chinese flowers or you want to buy Chinese flowers, go for it. There's, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, just realize uh, that there may be some sort of drying agent they use in some of them that won't maybe look as nice for some applications and, and uh, be better for other applications, so experiment. Experiment is always your friend, and uh, just know that, yeah, sometimes I have used and do use uh, flowers from China, and uh, they certainly can be affordable. So that's, that's the end of the segment on that. And since I showed you a piece of jewelry that uh, I wasn't happy with, I'll show you a couple things that I'm, I'm working on. I showed you the verbena with the Chinese verbena. Now here's one with a verbena out of my yard that I'm working on this piece of jewelry. Uh, this is color enhanced. So, and then it's got resin on it. But it just doesn't have any of that powdery, whatever that affliction is that went on. Uh, I thought this turned out cute. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's just grass. But I thought that turned out really cute. Here's a couple things that I'm working on. These have all been color enhanced and, and resined. This isn't done yet. This isn't done yet. Uh, but I'm working on them. It's hard to get the reflection off of there. It's Potentia, uh, Buttercup, Larkspur. Uh, garden, bleeding heart, uh, fern leaf bleeding heart, hide. Oh, that might be the back. Yeah, that's the back. This is uh, the front. The front of the heather. Oh, and one that I really like. Oh, here's some more. There's a. Like, again, I haven't finished these yet. 
I really like this one. I thought this one turned out cute. This is a uh, Pentis. Some other things that have been color enhanced is you can do things for artistic statements. Here's a leaf where I was playing around with. Uh, and I just thought, I've got this leaf. I really like the shape because to me, a lot of times pressed flowers and foliage is like working with paper, albeit a little bit more fragile. And, uh, and I just thought, oh, I want to play around with it. So this is a leaf. And first I put some, I think it was a gold on there, and I didn't like it. So then I put some green on there. And uh, this, this is just playing around with just an idea. And then I thought, oh, I'll put some full stitching around the outside and then do some little doodling in there and then put this on a tag, you know, put this down on a tag and then just use it as a piece on a, on a, of an embellishment for, for something additional. You can put some words on there. You can do some other artwork on there. You could do another, you know, you could have this on a, on a tag for the background and then you could take something like um, a medallion. That, that's not really it, but maybe a little medallion with a pressed flower on it. Uh, I don't have any any examples right now. Uh, but just take something small and, and uh, play around with that. So that was just uh, something you can do. You can use pressed flowers for uh, artistic uh, uh, mixed media. Now these have been color enhanced. I've shown these before in other videos. I just think this turned out really well. And then this has been color enhanced. And again, you know, same thing. But you see how much the quality, I mean, look at the quality on these. Now granted, these aren't old like, like the ones that I showed you before, but still, the, the quality of the work that I'm doing today, at least in my opinion, is certainly better than what I was doing back in the old days. This is contact paper, which I still like contact paper. What I like about contact paper, it's got more of a matte um, uh, satin finish, whereas the uh, bookmarks that are laminated have uh, a glossier finish, and I like them both. But this really protects the bookmark. These, these, this works too with the, with the uh, contact paper. Here's another uh, example of something that this is again about 20 years old or so because I know that I this is, was when I was using the mediums that I'm using now to color enhance with I know that I use that for these it's in other words this isn't acrylic this isn't pastel it was um uh it was it was the mediums I'm using now but the point that I want to make is this is 20 years older, more or less, because I gave this to Dawn's mother, although she's passed away now, may, may she rest in peace, uh, for Christmas one year. And fortunately, she said she really liked it. But the reason why I have it back is because she, she did pass away. And so this was one of some of the things that we got uh, of her belongings uh, after she passed. So for me, it gives me a chance to see how this has worn over the years. And had I not color enhanced these things, uh, they wouldn't still be as vivid as it is now. I mean, I still think it looks pretty good. I mean, there's still a lot of color and everything. The, the, the larkspur looks fine. Now, these fan flowers, you can see where they've, they've definitely faded a little bit. Because the a, flam, a fan flower, uh, I should have pulled one out, uh, is very much more blue than that. But still, you can see where even though the flam, fan flower faded, there's still a little bit of tint there. So, so I just wanted to show you an example of, of this has been color enhanced, and after 20 years, it still, it still looks accept, acceptable. I showed you this at the beginning of the video, and these have all been color enhanced because I'm uh, getting ready to do some jewelry and some cards and some things like that, and so I did a, a, a session. 
And one of the reasons why I thought, oh, I better start the color enhancing playlist is because I thought, oh, I'll just turn this on while I'm color enhancing in case someone wants to watch paint dry while <laughs> as I'm painting these. Uh, but maybe someone's interested so, uh, as I talk through what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, little techniques that I use to try to get a good result. Uh, but I thought, oh, as soon as I do that, someone's going to go, well, what are you using and what's your medium and all that? And I thought, oh, I better better do all that stuff first so that if someone has a question about what I'm using and how I'm doing it, I can say, well, here's here's the information about that. So these have all been color enhanced. These have all been color enhanced. And I've got a lot more, but I just wanted to, to show you an example of some things that I'm working on now for color enhancing. Something else that I wanted to show you is some things of how, you know, how they work over time. Now, this was uh, on my website, my amsplace.com website. You will see, uh, I believe on some of my pages, I still have this, but this was my logo. This was my M's Place logo uh, on my website. And you can see how over the years... I don't believe I color in hand. Well, maybe I did. I don't know. I can't remember. I don't know if these have been color enhanced or not. But this is, you know, a good 20. Well, my website went live in 97. It was 22. Started in 95. So this is probably 23 years old because I, this was one of the first things I did when I started working on my website was I wanted to have a, a visual to go with my my name, so uh, that's what that, that that's where that came from, and that's how this has held up over over the years. Now this piece is uh, I think I color enhanced most most of these two, and again this is probably twenty three years old, and. This was an animated GIF on my website, and I still use it today. So this is something that I did the animated GIF from, and as I was building it, I would scan it in, then I'd do a few more, and I'd scan it in, and I'd do a few more, and I'd scan it in, and then I made an animated GIF out of it. These are when I was putting things on paper to see what would happen. Now that I did a little, I could tell there's some color enhancing here, but I know it from. Now this has no color enhancement. But I just wanted to show you how some things have worn over time. This is that Mexican sage that I said holds its color at least for a really long time. I don't believe I color enhanced any of these things. Now every once in a while certain flowers, and again these are, oh geez, 15, 16, 17 years old, these sheets, you'll see where you see the little powdery stuff here? Some plants, buttercups, tend to do that. I noticed this guy did. Uh, I don't know what's under there, that microscopic, but the, it just starts to turn into dust. Now you can see something like that, nothing. But this one, you can see a little bit of that started to turn to dust and fade. And this one's turned to dust, but others, others haven't. So this is a, a stilby. I can't remember what that is. I have a Clarkia and a, I don't, I don't think that was the Clarkia. Uh, pineapple sage, Mexican sage, uh, grace ward. Pansy. Main here fern. I think that was another. This looks like a poppy of some kind. More more pansy or viola. These hold their color for a really long time. This is that uh, oregano. This is some real small flower for another one. 
Larkspur, it's got a little bit of that powdery thing going on. This is uh, Sweet Pea, Estrancha, I don't remember what that was, Lupin. These are not color enhanced. This was a uh, Boston Fern. This looks like an Astilbe leaf. Another kind of fern and uh, uh, what is that? Looks like a geranium leaf of some sort. This is, uh, I don't remember the name of that. This is from a coral bell leaf, breeze of grass, ivy, another kind of an oregano which holds its color really well. So does uh, fuchsia leaf. And this is another kind of oregano. I call them the fancy ornamental oreganos. There's a Queen Anne. Uh, this was from a, uh, yo, not Yarrow, this was from a, uh, uh, I can't think of it right now. This is from a Camellia, it's called a Chameleon plant. And uh, what was that one? Uh, I can't think of it. More fern. This is from a um, Rue. And more Brisa, more fern. This is a, from a Clematis, Yarrow, Verbena. Again, I didn't color enhance these. I just wanted to see how they would hold up over time. This is a uh, ladies' mantle. Delphinium, Cosmos, Bird's Foot Trifle, Larkspur, uh, uh, I can't, can't think of it. These hold their color for a super long time, this Montbrecia. This is the flowers from a, a goat's beard, dwarf goat's beard. This is a Bleeding Heart. Uh, I don't remember what that's from. Some sort of fever few or something. And then another sheet that I started, or that I did, was... I'm not going to take it out of the folder because... I'll hold it a little bit so it's not so glary. Now I know when this was done. This was done in 98. At least this section. This section. I think I had this section I started first. And then I started this section, and I thought, oh, I better date it so that I know what the date was. And and then I was, some of them I, I labeled, but none of these are color enhanced. I just wanted to see how, how they'd hold up over the years. So I'll just let you look around at them. I'm not going to name them all. Maple does really well. Now... Here's an example of a picture where the the uh, the fern has been color enhanced, and then these fuchsias have been color enhanced. This is on eco dyed paper uh, that was eco dyed with fuchsia, so the background pattern is from eco dyed fuchsia and then the actual uh, fuchsia that was used, not the actual fuchsia that was used for dyeing, but um, the same plant that was used for the eco dye, I also then used for the picture. So to conclude this video, the, the point is that the choice to color enhance just depends on what your goal is. If you are just making cards or doing something for yourself or to give away to a family member and you're not really, you know, making money and, and doing that kind of thing, none of this matters. You don't really have to worry about color enhancing and doing all that. Just enjoy yourself. Get your flowers, buy your flowers, however you come by them, and just have fun. If you want to take a dip or deep dive into the subject, then that's what this playlist will do. I'll share my thoughts, we'll learn some things together, 
um, some of the things that I, I've learned that I'll share. Maybe some of you had your own experiences that you can comment about and, and share with us down in the comments below. One thing about it, though, is that it does take patience. <laughs> And you have to be willing to, you know, accept some failures because you're going. To, everything's not going to turn out, you know, beautiful. I've got lots of things sitting around in my my stash that uh, that I would never sell to anybody because it just it just doesn't measure up. Uh, if you're going to do a card where you know they've got it for a few days or a couple of weeks and then it, you know they do something else with it, it don't, you don't have to color enhance. You don't have to worry about it. Because, you know, most all flowers are going to last for, you know, relatively long time and still look good. It's just that if I'm selling a picture to somebody and, you know, they're going to hang it on their wall, I'd, I'd like to know that in, you know, five years or however long that there's still something there left to, you know, to appreciate. The other thing, too, is learning uh, what plants hold their color longer. Uh, Larkspur typically does really well and things, you know, things that we've already talked about here. Uh, if you watch my uh, peeking at flowers video, I often, t you know, say things like this holds its color for a really long time or this holds its color for a long time or this doesn't hold its color as long as others. But typically the things that I grow nowadays is because over the years and with experience, I've just come to learn, generally speaking, what things hold their color longer, and so that's what I grow. I, I only grow things that, for the most part, I know now, uh, that from over the years, that, that they hold their color fairly reasonable, which is why I grow certain things. And now those are, those are subjects that you'll hear me talking about in the flower pressing demonstrations and the peeking at flowers video. So if you want to know more about that subject, check out those playlists. Somewhere in all of the videos uh, that I've posted about pressing flowers, a lot of the questions can be answered. It's just that I am long-winded. A lot of my videos are very long. And so I'm sure that people that that don't want to take a deep dive in this subject probably get bored. And I, I uh, you know, I apologize for that. But uh, uh, I, my style is uh, uh, is to talk too much, <laughs> is to write a novel. A lot of people say, Emily, you say in a <laughs> you say in a paragraph what you could have probably said in a sentence. Yeah, I know. Uh, but if somebody wants the the full novel, then it's there. If somebody wants the condensed version, then I don't know. <laughs> Fast forward, <laughs> tune me out. Put it put it on in the background. Uh, so let's come full circle. Where, where we're at now is that we are going to, in the next video, and I don't know when it will be done, but uh, hopefully at some point over the winter, uh, we will be going into formulas. And if you just want a quick formula, get yourself a, a bat bottle of, uh, of fabric uh, paint and make a 50-50 formula vinegar to rubbing alcohol to thin your paint and play around with that if you want the Reader's Digest version. And or get yourself some fabric markers that are permanent. I have a tulip and then I have the stained by Sharpie. I like them both. They both have the uh, the more of the uh, brush tip. You want to make sure they're brush tip, at least in my opinion. So get yourself some of these and get yourself some fabric paint and make yourself a little medium. And then you don't have to watch any of my other videos. You can just play around. Uh, but if you want to see me go into making different kinds of formula and what formula I prefer for what, uh, and then also where we're going to start playing with different kinds of paints, this We'll take a look at, uh, you know, the writ dyes. We'll we'll take a look at acrylics. We'll take a look at, uh, you know, various different things. Maybe we'll do some paint along together type things. Um, I will actually do some painting demonstrations because there's certain techniques I use for some flowers that don't work well for other flowers, and so we'll take a deep dive into that. So that's what this playlist is about: is a close look at the subject of color enhancing me sharing the things that I've learned over the years with you, if this is something that you're interested in. 
and I'll see you in the next video where we will go into making some formulas uh, to work with the uh, different paint and or colorants that uh, we can use for our color enhancing endeavors. So thank you very much for tuning in and you have a wonderful day.